Coming up, Berkeley scientist Arlene Bloom to talk about a class of chemicals that are supposed to keep us safe, but do they really? They're in just about all our homes, couches and chairs containing polyurethane foam, and the foam contains large quantities of flame retardants, as mandated by state law to protect against fires. But the chemicals have been linked to numerous health problems, including cancer, learning delays, and infertility. State lawmakers are now considering whether to overhaul regulations. The debate was started by Berkeley scientist Arlene Bloom, who pioneered research on the dangers of flame retardant in children's pajamas and succeeded in getting it removed back in 1977. Now, decades later, she's back on the front lines battling these chemicals, this time in our furniture. And Arlene Bloom, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, this week the uh, EPA announced that it is stepping into the debate. It will assess the safety of flame retardants. And I'm wondering if it was if it was decided in the 1970s that flame retardants, chemical flame retardants, are unsafe. Why then are they being put into our furniture now? Well, in the 70s, actually, my research showed that the flame retardant tris in children's pajamas ended up inside the children and changed DNA, was a likely cancer-causing agent. It was banned from children's pajamas. But what we didn't know is that it was used in other products and in the last 10 years has been the number one uh, chemical in furniture foam in California today. And by law, they have, they're supposed to have these flame retardants, right? Because it's supposed to withstand exposure to small flames like candles for 12 seconds or longer without igniting. That's absolutely right. California is the only place in the world that has a standard saying that the foam inside furniture will resist a candle flame. And that leads to lots of chemicals in the foam inside furniture. But it does not lead to an increase in fire safety. It doesn't? No. Surprising. It uh, fabrics is where fires start, and there's nothing about the fabric. It says the foam inside will resist a very small flame, but if you drop a candle on your couch, the fabric burns, you get a large flame, the foam burns, and with flame retardants, it gives off a lot of the toxic gases that are what kill you in fires. So the flame retardants actually don't make it, there's no benefit. Well, the furniture industry, though, defends the flame retardants. They say that there's been a huge drop in deaths caused by furniture deaths, that 1,400 deaths happened in 1980. That's now down to 600 in 2004. You're shaking your head. Is that not correct? Uh, the people who say that are the manufacturers of the chemicals. We have less fire deaths because less people are smoking. Places that don't have flame retardants at all in their furniture have exactly the same drop in fire deaths as we in California, whose furniture is 5% by weight flame retardants. The furniture industry does not want the chemicals. They say, we sell comfort. We don't want the chemicals for our workers or the public. The three producers of the chemicals are really the only ones who want the chemicals in our furniture. Help me understand this. Um, the chemicals, how are they helping? How are they harming us? And what kinds of health problems are associated with them? Well, they're continually coming out of our furniture. Um, how, how does that happen? Well, they go from an area of high density in the furniture to an area of low density outside. You know, like if you have something hot, it cools. The chemicals are always coming out. They drop into dust. Toddlers crawl in the dust. They put their hands in their mouths. It ends up in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So we in California have the highest levels in the world in our bodies, our breast milk, our children. It's very really? sad. Um, how much of the chemicals are in our furniture? Do they, do they pump a lot in? They're 5% of the weight of the foam. So if you really? have 40 pounds of foam in your couch, you have two pounds of a chemical like DDT or PCBs. And I, I didn't answer your earlier question. There are three or 4,000 papers showing increases in levels of these chemicals in humans, wildlife, um, and animal health problems. And now we have maybe 20 papers showing human health problems. So when pregnant women have higher levels, it, um, their children end up with lower IQs, neurological impairments. Um, it's bad for fertility, bad for neurological development, and some of them are cancer causing. So quite a serious problem. You've been the biggest crusader against flame retardants. How did you even first get involved in this in the first place in uh, the 1970s? I hear it all started with your cat. 
Well, I don't say crusader. I'm a scientist. My job is to inform people. Uh, in the 70s, we learned that children in America had these chemicals in their bodies. They were cancer-causing. They were banned. Um, they were removed from our kids' pajamas, and I actually didn't think about it. I went off and climbed mountains for a long time, <laughs> and uh, in 2006, discovered that the same trysts that we'd gotten out of um, children's pajamas in the 70s was back in our furniture. And, and indeed, my cat had a disease, hyperthyroid disease, that might be related to the chemicals. We don't know for sure. And that's when you first suspected that flame retardants might be to blame? It's possible, yeah. There's this one study saying when there's higher levels in dust in a household, you have uh, higher levels of hyperthyroid disease than cats. Cats do have a very high level in their body because the chemicals are in dust and they lick their fur. So cats do have 10 to 100 times the level of humans. Wow. Um, and just real quickly, are flame retardants in other products as well, besides furniture? Yeah, they're in building insulation, electronics, um, foam under carpet cushion. We actually did a study in nursery schools where we found them in sleep mats that toddlers sleep on. So it's very common. Well, there are a few uses. You know, there are some places where flame retardants could be useful, perhaps in an airplane. But in things like home furniture and juvenile products, nursing pillows, high chairs, strollers, car seats, there's no benefit in those places. And, and, and you know, the great news is it's all going to change, thanks to Governor Brown. Yes, he has weighed in on the debate, too. He's proposing something called a smolder test, where you can just resist fire by cigarettes. And I understand you can meet the standard without flame retardants. Exactly. The main cause of fire deaths is smoldering cigarettes mm. that drop on chairs, couches, and by just having the right kind of fabric, you can stop those fire okay. deaths, um, get rid of flame retardants. It's a huge win-win for our health and right. our environment and fire safety. We'll see how it all turns out. Arlene Bloom, thank you for joining us. Arlene's work has also been honored by Encore.org with a $100,000 purpose prize for her work in a so-called Encore career.